Okay, this is Dave here at the How to Podcast series. I hope you're doing awesome. I have something to talk about today that I don't know. Um, I struggle with this a little bit because I've had some friends of mine get attacked by podcast gurus and experts and I've seen the disappointment and heard their concerns and I've actually had some of my newer podcasting friends that I've met online in groups reach out and say, Dave, I'm thinking about not podcasting after some of the feedback that I've had from an expert here or there sharing their thoughts about my podcast and my progress. I don't think I'm cut out for this. I'm not going to do this. And to that, I am saddened. I'm angry. I'm disappointed, not in my new friends that are struggling to start their podcast, but I'm disappointed in people who go around beating up others claiming to be experts, claiming to be coaches, and finding they're more of a judge. A judge, a jury, and an executor, all in one. And they live in a high tower looking down on the meager new podcasters who are struggling to find their way in a very noisy world. And... This is a podcast where I'm going to show you 14 examples of what a bad coach looks like and who to avoid if you're looking for help in starting your podcast. I wish I didn't have to make this episode, but I am really, really getting annoyed by some of the terrible examples out there of people who just have gone a little too far. So if you've been beaten up by a podcast coach, guru, expert, I say with air quotes, this episode is for you and I want to encourage you to not give up. Don't stop because you have a message for the world. And I don't want you to get disappointed or disillusioned. Not everybody really cares as much as they say they do. 14 examples of bad coaching and what to look out for here on the How to Podcast series. Again, I wish I didn't have to make this episode. But for my friends that are disappointed, this is for you. So I've talked about this on other podcasts as get when I'm a guest on podcasts with my co-hosts I've mentioned it in many places I have this theory that I'm floating around and I don't hear a lot of people talking about this so it might be unique but maybe not there seems to be two camps of podcast coaches gurus experts some haven't been doing this for a short time. Some haven't been doing this since the beginning of time. <laughs> and they seem to fall into one of two camps. Now, I'm a musician. I've mentioned this to you before. I've been playing music, guitar, bass, drums, piano, since I was 10 years old. So over 42 years I've been playing music. I love music shows like The Voice, for example. Uh, there was Rockstar Supernova and Rockstar in Excess. Those are awesome. I love watching musical talent unfold in front of you. And I love seeing people get a chance to step up to the mic, step up on stage with an amazing house band and just kill it on live TV. But there's two versions of these reality music shows, singing shows. There's American Idol, 
with three judges. And then there's the voice with four coaches. On American Idol, the one thing that really bothers me about the show, I guess, yes, great talent has been has been discovered on that show. That's amazing. But in the early days of each season, there are train wrecks. And I don't really understand the point of having people on to embarrass them, to belittle them, to make comments about them and and see them deconstructed as a person and see their hopes and dreams crushed on the show as a form of entertainment. It's like a watching a car accident happen. And the eye rolling and the just the the disdain in the in the voices and on the faces of these judges, these experts, these superstars, as to the level of competency, skill, talent, heart for people to get up and do their best, only to be judged, laughed out of the room, into the arms of their family, into the hallway, after being told they're not good enough. They're not as good as they should be. Why are you here? And in those moments of judgment, that show loses me as, as an audience member. In comparison to the voice where you have four coaches and whether or not you make it through and someone selects you to be on their team on that show yes there's disappointment if they don't make it through but i see coaches leave their chair to hug and comfort and support to welcome people back the next year to come back and they come back Many of them do. They come back after learning a lesson about preparation or their voice or getting help to be better, but they come back. There's a, there's a, a, a huge difference between being a coach on The Voice and being a judge on American Idol. And it's, it's in the name. And what I'm finding is there's so many podcast coaches who say they're a coach but they're really a judge they make fun of people they hurt people they say things and then come back and retract them or apologize later without any thought of well maybe i shouldn't even say these things they throw it in the world They make a big deal about their opinion on this person is this way and this person shouldn't podcast or you you have the wrong microphone. You're on the wrong hosting site. You're doing it all wrong. You are just, what is wrong with you? How dare you be so terrible at podcasting? And I'm getting annoyed. I really am. And so I went through and I wrote down 14 examples of bad coaching. When you're looking for a podcast coach, someone to guide you, someone to help you get started, get going on your podcast journey, you need to find the right person, whoever that is. And I want to give you just some unfiltered, guidelines for you to consider before you sign up for anything with anyone or take advice from people who are in the know, the experts. There's some red flags you need to watch for. Number one, not practicing the values that they preach. If you're going to be judged on how you edit your podcast and how you sound, it better be coming from somebody who actually cares about how they edit and how they sound. I've listened to experts who cough, sneeze, make mistakes, 
we, we all make mistakes. I make constant, lots of mistakes. Promise you. But to say, I'm going to leave that in the podcast because I'm being real and then criticize others for doing the exact same thing. I have a problem with that. Not practicing the, the values they preach or they dictate or they judge you on is a red flag for me. Number two, believing that they have all of the answers. Be wary of coaches who believe that they have the answer to every single thing. A coach's job is not to give you answers. Rather, the coach is there to support you to find the answer. That's a big difference. Come to me, I have all the answers, compared to I'm going to help you find the solution to what you're looking for. Your coach is there to support you in defining those answers. A high-quality coach will empower you to sit in the driver's seat instead of sitting in the passenger seat or in the back seat or on some of the podcasts I've heard in the trunk. Your coach is there to simply support your journey with powerful questions, insights, and to be mindful of you. Your coach should never say to you that they have all the answers, all the solutions. Come to me. I have it all. That's a red flag. Be careful. The other one, number three, placating without giving real or going deep. Truth is key. If you want to grow quickly, Hire a coach who cares about your life, not your feelings. Accountability and objectivity are key. If you find yourself working with a coach who is more concerned with making sure you're happy than getting real or going deep, it's time to go for a walk. People come to coaching because their way isn't working and they're unsure of the next step. You need a coach who's going to be real with you. Number four, compromising client confidentiality. If you hear coaches, whether they're on a podcast, being interviewed, whatever, and they're giving away information from their clients in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable, just remember that might be your information they're giving away. In the future, find a coach that you feel comfortable with that doesn't wave the flag of all of the problems that they solve and give examples of people that they work with and how terrible they were when they came to them and how great they were after working with them. I like testimonials, but a coach should never put down anyone that they're working with. Number five, predicting your future. No one can predict your future. If anyone suggests that you will achieve this or that you cannot get to that without their help, they're making guarantees beyond their control. You are the only one who can determine the your destination. A coach can show you your reflection like a mirror. They can point out things that they... They can see, they can question your thinking, but it is you who owns your direction. It is you that owns your podcast. It is you that owns your content. It is you that owns your life. Your coach is not there to predict your future. Number six, they lack professional ethics. A lack of professional ethics is the biggest red flag. A coaching partnership is an intimate relationship, highly confidential. Bad coaching is not even coaching. It's everything else except coaching. Our clients do not need to be coaching, coached by experts. It's important for them to know they're signing up for and if their interests will be protected and respected by their coach. 
Notice I'm not saying judge. Number seven, it's not about you. It's all about them as a coach. If you're in a conversation with your coach and the majority of the topic is about them, what they've done, how successful they are, all the things they've learned, I understand being an example to your, to the people you're coaching. But when they are the topic of the conversation and you as the client, as the one being coached, gets very little airtime, you're more of their therapist than their client. You really are. You need someone who doesn't have it all together, but someone who is there for you not looking for somebody to be there for them. Number eight, they don't invest in their own personal development. If your coach simply takes headlines and regurgitates them as content, never lives their experience, never gains the knowledge, never reads the book, never gets that education, never learns. They're stuck. The most motivating and inspiring people that I've ever met in my life are learners. They're learning. They're, they're not, they don't have to be the teacher. They can be the student. But they're actively moving the ball forward in the things that they do. And they invest in themselves. They learn. They grow. And I think if your coach is not learning, they're not going to have much to teach you. Number nine, they lack experience and expertise in their field. Look for somebody who's aligned with your goals for coaching. It's important to see if your coach is confident and can guide someone who has navigated the same minefields or possesses experience that will benefit you as a client. Number 10, they don't, they're not listening actively to their clients. It's very common practice in a lot of business coaching or podcast coaching to not actively listen. And I've actually heard examples of a coach who seems completely annoyed, bored, distracted, uh, comments and responses to their clients. Like we're interfering with their day by asking a question. If your coach doesn't listen to you actively, it's time to find another coach. Not being listened to can lead to frustration. And in customer service, it's all about the customer. It's not about the coach. Number 11, they, they don't believe in their clients, really. Especially if they don't agree with the coach. They sometimes doubt their clients. And by doubting their clients, they sometimes limit their clients from growing in wisdom. And it's a mindset that needs to be shifted if you want to grow and if your coach is going to be successful for you. Twelve, they overpromise and they underdeliver. I have signed up for a few different things, and one of them was a couple who wanted to mentor people and help them with their small business and their podcast. I signed up. I paid for the course. I paid for the access to them, and they did not show up once 
as promised. They were completely focused on my credit card. They never made an attempt to reach out in a personal way and connect. And when I messaged them after being in the group for a while and asked to leave the group, that's the first time that I got to speak to them. And they wondered why. And I was honest and said, you promised to be interactive. You promised to make time. And you didn't. I was in another group. And the group was so big that when we had a group call and we all got on a group call together, there was no time for each person to, sh to shine or ask a question or, or grow or be a part of the conversation. There were a few people that the host seemed to favor and the rest of us were kind of spectators. But we all paid the same amount to be there. And in that situation, I just, I'm like, how is this coaching going to benefit me as a client? I came here for help. And I'm just listening to the coach gush on their favorites in the group who have been with them for a long time. Well, understood. Yes, they've, they've been there a long time. But no one else in the group had a moment to even step up. So when you see all these claims of time with these hosts and time with these gurus and I will promise you this, I will promise you that, I'm finding that a lot of these gurus are, are kind of like a self-serve or when you go to the store now and you have to be your own cashier and check your own products through the cash because <laughs> there's no more cashiers anymore and you have to do that part yourself. I'm finding a lot of coaches treat their programs like that. You sign up, you pay the money, but you get to the end of your shopping with them and you have to ring your own products through because that's how they do it. Over-promising and under-delivering. And I guess number 13, this one is the one that really kind of makes me probably the most angry is when a coach is embarrassed by their own actions and content. If your, co if your coach continues to embarrass themselves in public, if their coaching sessions or their podcast, and in doing those, they talk down to people, they're rude, they're dismissive, abandon them as a coach, I realize that no one is perfect. I'm not perfect. But that being said, if your coach cannot even learn from their own mistakes, when they make them repeatedly, and with no attempt at correcting their own course or learning from their own mistakes, this might not be the coach for you. How can they help you if they can't even help themselves? And lastly, number 14, here are my warning flags for a bad coach. A bad coach can easily be identified by any or all of these traits. And I've seen these in many people. And I guess even at times I've seen them in myself. And these are what I'm working on. But here are some warning flags for you. Arrogance. Being self-absorbed. It's all about them. You hear it in their content. Me, 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 me. They're egotistical. Their ego is huge. Huge. I don't know how sometimes they fit through doorways. Quite honestly. I feel like giving them a ladder so they can get over themselves. They're self-destructive. They're dismissive. Judgmental. If you ever hear your coach say to you, do as I say, but not as I do. That's, that's it for me. If I hear you say that to me, if you're, if your coaching is not even good enough for you, it's not good enough for me. 
if they say inappropriate things or they act in an inappropriate way. If you shake your head at any point when you hear them say things, that is not the coach for you. I'm sorry. I've heard of coaches and experts who think that it's wise to start a war with someone just to be noticed in the public eye. If they're pushy, if they're snarky, if they have a click, I don't mean like a click, like a, the sound of a click, but a, a group, a small group, and no one else allowed in there, a click. I'm just worried for new podcasters, and you're going to hear more of this in upcoming content. I think we need less of this. Oh, man, dude. This has been one of the worst days we've ever had. And you are probably the worst we've had today. If that's your podcast coach, guru, leader, expert in your life, it's time for another coach. It is. If you feel like you're in the wrong classroom. I would love to help you. Again, I'm, I'm a student learning. I'm willing to help. And I promise you that you will never feel judged. And if I can't find you the answer, I won't pretend to know everything because I don't. My website doesn't have every link. I don't haven't learned. I haven't learned every lesson. But I know that you have a message for the world. And if you are discouraged to share your message because you don't fit in a certain category or do it a certain way or do it the way they do it, and you leave and end up in the hallway crying in your in the arms of your relatives because you thought you could do it, but obviously you can't because the expert said you just don't know what you're doing. Oh, you're the worst we've ever seen. How do you even, what are you doing? That's your experience. Reach out. Let's talk about that. Okay? Because I think you are important and your message matters. And if you getting a podcast going and you share something that connects with an audience member and you change their life, that guru, that expert that treated you that way, they're wrong. And I think your voice matters. And I think you need a coach more than a judge. Reach out to me. If this, if this means this topic means anything to you, or if you've had an experience, or you, or you want to challenge me on this, I would love to hear from you, but I am really getting tired of people who treat people poorly and then ask for pay. It's, we need to stop making fun of each other. We need to stop putting each other down, pointing out all of the bad things that people do or our opinion of what people should do because we have all the answers. It's time to start being more inclusive. And I heard this once before. As riches increase, it's not time to build a bigger wall. It's time to build a bigger table. And I'm finding a lot of podcasts, gurus, and experts build walls around their community, around their expertise, around them, instead of building a bigger table. And even though you and I may not agree on everything, one thing I, we do agree on is that you have a message and that I would love to help you. That's why I created the How to Podcast series. I want every voice that needs to get out in the world 
to have a microphone to get out there and go. And if I can help you do that, that's what I'm here for. Howtopodcast.ca Howtopodcast.ca I want to hear from you. I really do. I'm serious. Let's talk. Thanks for listening. Let's get out there and find a good coach. And let's get away from the judge. Okay? Thanks. Thanks.